bring somebody in who knows a lot about dog too, because there's like there's a TARDIS and there's the canine and then there's the Scottish yeah, guy that was in it at the yeah, minute. Yeah, you wanted the king of the geeks, didn't you? Yeah. Hi. Hi. So we're going to co-host this Doctor Who panel, and we've got some, we've got some people loitering over here. They look kind of impressive and famous. Oh, really? I'm a bit intimidated. <laughs> You're intimidated. a bit intimidated. If I was a king of the geek, if I wasn't the king of the geeks, if I was just a normal geek, I'd be like, hello. They're very impressive looking. Yeah, don't, you know, I'm, let's I'm, not do that again. No, don't do that again. I'm not allowed in, in certain places for doing that. So. Do you want to introduce them? Or shall we take turns? You, you two, tell me what you're going to do. Just introduce these wonderful people so they can go have a sit. And uh, there's a jug of vodka, I mean orange, I mean water. On the desk, why help yourself? It's freshly. You do the names, I might get wrong. I'm mean, intimidated. You do it right. Oh, do Rosie. It right. You get to choose whichever chair you wish because you're first. Yeah. That's you get to choose. Cool it's guys. Like cool. Cool, isn't it? I just realised it's about being back at school. You aren't picking you. Aren't picking. I was always the one who was never picked. <laughs> Sucks. Ah. Oh. So yeah, Sophie, Gareth. Got some names off, dude. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Everyone get on stage. Get on the stage. It's the Doctor Who panel. Well, that, that's Victoria, there, isn't it? That's Victoria. Is that Victoria? Is she the sexy peasant? Hello, Simon. That's a big crowd, like a big crowd. Yeah, all right. They get to show off. Make sure we got enough chairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, if you can, you can sit on my knee if you like. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering why there's extra chairs were stuck in the corner. Sure. Yeah. Now I know. We've got three glasses between us. Mm. No, four. Can we get some more glasses? Otherwise, there's going to be a fight on stage. Well, actually, yeah, that <laughs> Have we got another chair, guys? Have we got another chair? <laughs> You do, you do not want to share a glass with me. <laughs> Why? I'm not good. Oh look, this, this has got stars on it. Isn't it nice? Another chair, right? I'll get that. There you go. Hello, everybody. Hopefully, we'll still get the glasses. So, Reese, where do we start? Oh, where do we start? Um, we can start with a silly question. Go on. Uh, guys, uh, what's the best Doctor Who monster impression you can all do. I've got a good one, but I won't go first, because I'm on a start, so... I think go. I can do a good weeping angel. Go for it. <laughs> the crowd applause, come on! So, Sophie's given up Luke Lavery, so I'm going to kill you. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't, don't ask an actor to act. Don't do it. That's good. You're going to do it? Um, let's see, what should I do? Gosh, there's so many to choose from, aren't they? Just like you were yeah. saying earlier, there's so much Doctor Who. Oh, look, that's my phone. I'll turn that on. Oh, sorry. That's the only phone you want. That was, that was an impression of a Doctor Who monster. <laughs> it's like a sort of drunk, drunk dialect. Oh, that's even worse now. I, I'll, I'll do it from Torchwood. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see it again. Yes, please. Ooh. That's the alien sax gas. <laughs> I thought that was you. <laughs> it might be. It might be really enjoying this panel. So just let him do the thing. That's my favourite so far. Is that your favourite so, so far? No pressure for everybody else in. You got it. <laughs> just remember, Reese came up with this question. <laughs> Oh, I know. There's the um, well. He's not a, a, a monster, but he was in Greatest Show in the Galaxy, and it was the, the chief clown one. Mm, oh, yeah. <laughs> he kept going like that, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Do you like that? I mean, that's good. Yeah, go around, boys. My sex cast didn't get an applause. That's disgusting. <laughs> What you're watching for is the audience going, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try and do a Dalek impression, if you wait. It's probably going to be really bad. Really Go bad. On, I'm sorry, everyone. <clears throat> okay, mm -hmm. all right. I am a Dalek. I will exterminate you. <laughs> yeah, come to think of it, 
they don't have many female Daleks, do they? No. 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 See, because we're evil and sexist. <laughs> what? Women or Daleks? No, they're yeah. Daleks. Don't get me immortal, them already. Come on. Carefully, Reese. I, I said the Daleks were sexist. Yeah. Daleks are sexist. <laughs> Who's got impression? You must have one. What, me? You must have. You must no. have. Uh, you can't do any Doctor Who impressions. I do speak to Doom, though. Oh, no. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, <laughs> you must have one. Yeah, I should have one. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, you, you, you look like you're like, I do it. <laughs> Which is a great answer. It's like, can you do an impression? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't have any. This is, this is the best I do for the month. That's fine. <laughs> I have to watch it every morning in the mirror, so you might as well. Have you got one? I want to. Wasn't it? The waitress. So yeah, it was the first one I did. When was the last time you watched that episode? Do you generally go back and watch the stuff that you've been in, or do you are you moving on to other stuff? No, do although I have to say I'm not I'm not one of these people who goes, oh, I never watch myself. Do I can't bear because I think it's always a great opportunity to look and see. Hang on a minute, how could I improve on that? Or you know what what um, I seem to be able to sort of separate what I see on the screen from. Me, I don't sort of take it personally, really, because I think, wow, this is that's a job I do, and and uh, you know, another uh, we've got this brilliant opportunity to have a look and see, oh yeah, well, what could I do differently next time, or whatever. Anyway, yeah, Dragonfire was um, was my first Doctor Who story at all, my first TV role. I'd never even had a screen test. I'd never been in front of the camera, and so I was chucked straight in there. Um, I really enjoyed it and I love doing TV. I love acting in front of cameras. I, mean, I remember we were speaking the other day and it, you were telling me the Fiddler on the Roof story, which I think is great. Uh -huh. Nobody's heard that one. Could you go through the. Yeah, sure. It's a one? long one. Are you, are you ready? Are you sitting ready? comfortably? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, I, my agent had put me up for Doctor Who, three episodes, because they'd said they were looking for somebody who looked younger than they were really were and who could ride a motorbike and and I looked younger than I was and I for some reason learned to ride motorbikes so um, I was in the back row of the chorus in Fiddler on the Roof at the Manchester Opera House with Topple playing the main role he was reprising the role he played on the movie and uh, and I went down to London one morning begrudging the train fare because I was on equity minimum in the back row of the chorus, you know. And I got there and um, they gave me a bit of script and I went and met the director and um, did a, you needed to do a, a piece then. And I did this bit from a play called Daisy Pulls It Off, which then I eventually did in Theatre Cluid, actually not far from here. But I was in this empty meeting room with a load of chairs and the, and the director. It's quite surreal what you have to do sometimes for auditions. And, um, and then chatted to him, got back on the train thinking, oh, that was a waste of time. And then a couple of weeks later, got a call from my agent again to say, they want to see you uh, for a recall. I thought, oh no, another train for... Because it's, it, it's like impossible to get a job in TV. You, know, you, you always, you go for recalls and recalls, then you get down to the last two, they go, I'm so sorry, you were wonderful, but we've given it to the other person. Um, Anyway, I went down uh, again, and this time I met the producer, John Nathan Turner, and his office was amazing. It was, um, it was red, as I remember, and it had lots of merchandise in it, uh, which you couldn't get at the time. 
uh, Dalek curtains, Dalek carpet, and he was smoking, because you could in those days, and he lit a cigarette, like this, very theatrical he was, and um, got me to read this piece again. And then he gave me a few na notes and asked me to read it again, and I did, and I was in there for about 10 minutes, and the director came in at the end and said, my agent had put on the back of my publicity photo, has own leathers, uh, which I'm convinced was the reason I got seen in the first place. Anyway, it did the trick. Um, and I thought, oh, another train fair. Forgot all about it, like you do, don't you, with these auditions. And then um, a couple of weeks after that, I told you it was a long story. Anyone, anyone nodding off yet? I got into the theatre, and we didn't have mobiles in those days, and there was one theatre phone in a phone box backstage, and I queued up uh, to use the phone, because I had messages from my agent all over the board saying, ring me, ring me, ring me. And I came, went onto, st onto the stage, did, you know, the first number, did tradition, and then came off, rang her, and she said, she was actually a bit cross with me, she said, where have you been? I've been trying to get in touch with you all day. And I said, well, I've just been around. And she said, they want you for the job, but it's a lot more complicated. I'll ring you back. So uh, I was just left in the phone box thinking, what? And she rang back and she said, they want you for the three episodes, but they're also wondering if you would take over the role of the assistant if Bonnie Langford leaves. And I was like, what? In, uh, on equity minimum in the back row of the chorus at the opera house and offered one of the best roles on British TV. Hmm, let me think. <laughs> so I came out of the phone box and the first person I saw was uh, this guy John Scott Martin who was playing the rabbi in our production of Doctor Who and he used to be in Doctor Who as the insides of Daleks and monsters and zombies and things like that. And he was there in his rabbi costume, queuing up for the phone. And I kind of, I was shell-shocked. I said, John, I got the part. And he just smiled at me and he reached into his costume and he pulled out this postcard and it was a BBC Dalek publicity photo with three Daleks on the front and he said, here you are. And I turned it over and it said, welcome to the family. You will not be exterminated. <laughs> then he ended up being in Remembrance of the Daleks, the Dalek story that I did, inside the Daleks. So it was, an, it was just amazing. Mm. Where do you go from there? Where do you go from there? I don't know. Then you, go, you can go with a question about Torchwood, or you can go about another question about Ace. There's so many choices, you know. It's up to you. What do you want to do? Torchwood? What's, what's this Torchwood? What's this Torchwood? What's this Torchwood? I know. Uh, I, got a, I actually have got a question for Gareth. Um, oh, in the garden. Can you call yeah, yeah. an ambulance? Yeah, we're calling an ambulance, a six-foot idiot. Um, You're an ambulance. Turn the mic off. I guess a lot of you have actually visited the city of Cardiff. Everyone visited Cardiff? Okay, there's one whoop. Wow. Um, <laughs> trying to talk about the South. Um, <laughs> good, come to the audience. Um, in Cardiff, there is a shrine called the Yanto Shrine. Oh, there's a round of applause for the Yanto Shrine. Uh, I just wanted to know what your feelings are that the shrine is still here now, best part of nearly a decade up on there. Rightly so. Damn. I'm there every other day maintaining it, um, <laughs> laminating knickers and whatnot. Um, <laughs> Please feel free to come and visit. I'll, I'll be there with a small uh, tin cup. Um, donations are accepted um, towards the, the maintenance of the, of the shrine. Um, yeah, seriously, it's quite weird when, when it happened, uh, but also very flattering to think that I've been part of something that um, uh, drove people to erect a shrine. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't claim ownership of the shrine. It's not my shrine. Yanto is. Uh, um, a lot of people's work, the, the writer, the designer's costume, I, I'm, just the, I'm just his voice box in his face. Um, but yeah, it is flattering to be, to be part of something like that that's, people got so moved that they direct a shrine. I am there every other day maintaining it. 
Isn't it a Google? Um, it's a Google landmark. It's yeah. number 38 in the top 50 things to do in Cardiff. <laughs> really love to all the facts. <laughs> it's one above the Millennium, <laughs> the Millennium Centre. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Now, Rosie, you've done a ton of theatre. How, what was your story about entering the world of Doctor Who? Which I watched your episode last night again. Yeah, so I um, actually played a soldier um, in the episode Into the Dalek a couple of years ago. Um, and that was when I was at university, so I was in Bristol studying at UE doing drama and English. And I finished that course and I was like, do you know what? I need to go to drama school. I need to do it. So I applied to East 15 Drama School. Um, got in there, so I'm still there now, and then through that um, they managed to call me back, um, what with um, Pearl obviously being cast as the Doctor Who's assistant, and then the likeness between us two, it just sort of seemed right that I would, um, yeah, play her mum. That's how I got that. Cool. Now, talking about drama schools, which you remember in Thailand, because I was doing some research on you, went to Thailand or something. I did go to Thailand, yeah. So when I was in sixth form, I was invited to go um, and teach English, actually. So I went to Laos first with um, a group of people, um, and then yeah, went on to Thailand afterwards. So yeah, teaching English around Good there. Time. Yeah. Over to you, Rhys. Um, I, I, it's the obvious question, really. I'd, I'd like to know how long each day it took to get the blue paint off you, sir. <laughs> <clears throat> well, actually, I was, I was very lucky because it was water-based. Um, it, it took them a bit of time to get it on, uh, but to take it off, about 40 minutes. Uh, and the best part of it was, after they'd taken most of the blue off, um, they got uh, wet towels and put them in a microwave, and then put them over my head, and my right leg shook. <laughs> it was so erotic. Um, uh, and I looked forward to that moment every day. Uh, <clears throat> but the blue got stuck into the pores of your skin. And uh, so for about a week the shower had a blue tinge. Uh, and also they put um, black eyeliner on the bottom lid, which reacted with my eyes and made them water. So when people ask me how I made my eyes glisten, I said it's very easy, you just stick a mascara brush. Um, but it made me look like an Egyptian, and what with the bald head as well. Um, so that's it. So the question was how long did it take to take up? It was about 40 minutes. So I was very lucky. Very Poor old Dan Starkey. He's probably still in the chair. The kiss still is. So Ian, you, you did okay with the makeup thing. It was robes for you, sir. It was just slip on the robes, shave my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Invested in a good, uh, a good razor, some polish. It's, fine. it's very easy now, though. I don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. How much fun was that episode shooting for you, Tooth and Claw? Pardon? How much fun was shooting that episode for you? Oh, it was great. It was really, really, really fun. I was, it was only about two weeks involvement, as you know. That's the way the episodes run. So, uh, in and out for about two weeks. Yes, great fun, great fun. In fact, Dave Foreman, the guy who taught me some of the martial arts skills uh, did very well with me because I'm not the most coordinated person in the world as anyone who's seen me on the dance floor will know uh, but, but um, he had two days to basically knock me into shape for the, the big set piece uh, aerial martial arts scene and he had me working with a quarter staff and various other types of kicks and so on and so forth and then he said Take the, um, take the staff home to the hotel and uh, they have a ballroom with a double, double height ceiling. Just ask if you can go in there. Don't, don't have the lights on, just go in in the darkness and work with the staff. It's high enough that you can't hurt, damage anything. So that was the, the sort of surreal kind of introduction. I really realised I was in something special when I was uh, in the middle of a bloody hotel in the darkness in a ballroom, hanging around a big six foot stick. Um, so yeah, great, great, great experience. The whole show was, was kind of full of surreal moments like that. But yeah, lovely, lovely. So I've also got quite a large audience here, so I'm going to open it up to the audience in a minute. I'm going to ask one last question for each of you, though. And it's a question I asked last year um, to a different panel. Is you've all done a ton of projects, but you're all sitting on a panel for Doctor Who, primarily. 
but which project for each of you should people watch that you're really passionate of, proud of, that you think, you know what, that needs a mention, please seek it out. So I'll start at this end, so Rosie, put pressure on you. Like, first, everybody else got time to think about it now. Um, yeah, so I'm, during drama school, during one of our devising modules, we created um, a show called What I Really Wanted to Say Was. Um, so it's a show that's um, tackling discrimination in the corporate workplace. Um, in terms of like race, disability and sex. Um, so we're basically tackling that on stage and that is the next showing of it will be at Voila Europe Festival um, in London. So if you um, type that into Google, you should be able to find it. So that's what I'm working on at the moment. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid mine is not half so um, uh, worthy as that. You know, it's brilliant. Uh, um, can I have can I have two? You can one, have two. one old, one one ancient, one modern. Okay. Well, one is uh, I think you can find them on YouTube, which is Melvin and Maureen's Musicograms, which my husband considers to be my finest work, where I play this character called Maureen, and uh, yeah, you've just got to check out the costumes, and it's it's crazy. It's it's a wonderful show. I loved loved doing it. Still got very fond memories of it. Ostensibly, it was to help young people learn about music of all different kinds. Uh, in real life, I think they probably all thought me must be on drugs, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's really good fun. Um, and then the other one, which I'm currently doing, is um, uh, it's an audio thing called Strangeness in Space. And again, it's a, a comedy. I love doing comedy. Uh, I'm doing it with Trev and Simon, who used to swing their pants on Saturday morning TV. Um, and we were at university together. Years, many years ago, uh, doing drama, and uh, we've always wanted to work together because we were on TV at pretty much the same time. And so they've written this for me and for them, and we've crowdfunded all the episodes, and it it reached um, number six in the iTunes comedy charts. Um, it's uh, the Guardian top fifty of uh, uh, podcasts you've got to listen to. And it's free to listen to, so you just go to the website, which is uh, strangenessinspace.com, and you can just listen to. We've done five episodes so far. We've got one last one coming out, and we've got loads of amazing people who are sort of queuing up to do it. We've got we've had uh, Carol Cleveland, Sally Phillips, Alexi Sale, uh, Sarah Green, um, Patterson Joseph. Uh, all sorts of, all sorts of, a Rufus Hound, uh, loads of people have come and guested on it. Um, but it's good fun to listen to. It's fun for all the family, as they say. <laughs> Mine has to be the episode I did of Rosemary in Time, um, groundbreaking era of TV, um, <laughs> where I am a, a member of a family that tries to, a, a murderous family that tries to escape at the end on a canal barge. <laughs> um, of course, we get to a lock, and then uh, Pam Ferris and um, uh, Felicity, Felicity Kendall, isn't it Felicity? Is it Kendall? Yeah. yeah. Um, catch us when we when we get to a lock. Um, but yeah, I, I think that episode really rose the bar for me as far as um, the demands for an actor, and you know, check it out. Oh, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to choose another one as well, if I may. Um, there, there's a, it's another two that are sort of linked. I've got DVDs on my table downstairs for Twisted Showcase. They've also got a stall here. Um, number 25 in the Guardian's um, top 50 web series. It's a horror series uh, anthology. Um, low budget, but very, very well crafted. I'm, I'm in two episodes, so if you want to come and grab a copy of that, either at the stall or... Um, Linking to that, with the same company, I'm going to be, this is, this is exclusive by the way, um, I'm, I'm going to be working, writing, directing and appearing in um, a web series called um, Black River Meadow, um, which is a horror story set in the, um, the Welsh Valleys in the hope to um, generate enough interest to turn into a full length series. So keep your eyes open for that, I'm going to, I'm going to post the links to the, to the new Twitter and Facebook pages for that later on. Thank you. I forgot what the question was.
question was? The question was... Uh, <laughs> I'm so interested. You're, 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 you're sitting here primarily for Doctor Who. Yes, yes, yes. But what other projects, maybe in past, present, future, uh, yeah. are coming up that people should check out? Um, I, I was very proud of a film I did back in May, which was for a charity called Save the Rhino International. Uh, and me and my godfather, who you might know from the show Arrow, we went over to Vietnam to talk about um, rhino conservation and uh, the effects of rhino poaching. So if you type in uh, to Google or you the Rhino Vietnam, there's a short film on there. And uh, it's a great campaign. We've got a load of people involved, Chris Hemsworth, Matt Smith, uh, the Doctor Huey lot, uh, Alex Kingston, all those guys. So, um, yeah, it's just a great cause. Save the Rhino International charity. Check them out and do some good for the world. Thank you.